What a great turnout today, Amber. It was fantastic. Amazing sessions, speakers, lots of great questions from the audience. It was awesome. Great. So what, yeah, when I'm thinking about it, we, we had Leonard Brody in the morning, then we had our panel, and you were on the panel, which was fantastic. We had Janice Stein. And um, the conversation, I, I don't know what you thought about the conversation, but the conversation to me, when, even the first two, we talked about technology. I mean, you think about all the leaders in the room today. One of the big, what I look at success is, I think we actually opened the eyes of some of these leaders in terms of really getting a sense of what's coming. Absolutely. I think it was great to have Leonard Brody just sort of to set the stage in terms of what's next, uh, but also to take a look back at our history so people felt perhaps a little bit less fearful about what's happening with the fourth industrial revolution because a lot of people are afraid of this change, but historically, as he did in his presentation and looked back, we were able to see that there have been so many changes and that we have been able to adapt, and this is just another big change. And the only difference, however, is that the rate of acceleration is that much faster than perhaps with uh, uh, previous uh, changes in society. So it means all of us need to adapt more quickly as well. Yeah, I, I took that from him as well. And if I think about even last night, we showed a graph around the velocity and we looked at the first three industrial revolutions and it was almost linear. And you look at the fourth one mm -hmm. and almost they, they talked about it, but they didn't really go crazy about it but it's almost a straight line up and it is actually the velocity and then you think about every industry and we heard that later on in the panel as well that is being impacted on this. Um, it's, it's amazing because I think these leaders, they sit there, they go to work every day, they spend 70 or 80 hours a week in their jobs. Mm -hmm. They read about this stuff, it's going mainstream this year, um, but I don't think they fully comprehend the impact when you got acceleration going like that and a scope where it's going to hit every one of their industries. And, and that's why I think it was such a great eye-opener for everybody in the room to understand the impact that it was going to have. And I think also just to add to that, the potential that these businesses have today, because if you look at Canada, we're really ripe to be leaders when it comes to this fourth industrial revolution. And I think about countries out there like Sweden, what are they famous for in the tech space? Spotify, so streaming radio, Estonia, they're famous for creating Skype, what's Canada famous for? And I think this is the opportunity over the next couple of years where this is in many ways the birthplace of the AI revolution and many of these businesses have an opportunity to leverage this technology to be able to really just improve the way that their businesses operate but also to help that, that group of people who's coming into the workplace and help them adapt to a new way of doing things. Yeah, I think, I think when we hear David Siegel recently just speak, he put up the slide and he showed the Canadian market and he was showing the private companies over a billion dollars or more, and we had one. Yes. Yeah, Kik. yeah right. and, and Kick is a bit of a controversial company in some right. ways, so I think it's we can do better than that. Yeah, so again, you know, hopefully with all this AI and Linton and all these guys coming here, uh, at least we get some momentum in terms of pushing it. The, the one other question that, I mean, we addressed today, and I think it was really with all this change coming so quickly, all leaders should start thinking about how can we shape and strategize in terms of where we end up because there are those laggards, there's the transition time here and it scares me from two fronts. One is from a, a haves and have nots mm -hmm. in terms of where all this intellectual capital is and the second one is um, the job loss. Like, What do you do when during these times, let's say it's the next five or ten years when you have such job displacement, where are those people going to go? Can you really retrain them? And I know we heard a lot about that as well today. Yeah, I, I was really fascinated to see that stat from Tommy where he talked about the different industries that would be impacted, impacted by the changes in the future of work. More than 40% of jobs that we know today will be impacted in terms of maybe not even existing in the future. And I think when we look at numbers like that, we have to start to understand that it's time today to be able to plan for or the future workforce and there are going to be people who are left behind but how do we ensure within our organizations that those people are properly retrained or that uh, we help them to deal with this transition because there is this responsibility there I think from the leaders in these organizations yeah and I so I hope we really left them with that number one and uh, you know they're walking out the door and they got some ideas on how they're going to do that because really I mean you and I can talk all about this but the, that room today the amount of intelligence in that room and the ability and and what they you know if you think about the GDP that just those leaders in the room create they're the ones that can really influence it so I hope they actually take something from that and actually start pushing ahead and we end up with a much a few more Canadian companies that are those billion dollar companies more unicorns absolutely <laughs>